Hello and full person, this is Anton, and what you're looking at right here is a very intriguing structure located in northwestern Russia. This is known as the Kola Superdeep Borehole. For roughly around two decades, starting in 1989, this was the deepest artificial point we've ever reached by drilling into our planet. In this case, reaching a depth of approximately 12 kilometers. But back then, the scientists realized that, well, that's pretty much as far as we can probably get. Mostly because things get extremely hot at this depth, and mostly because it becomes extremely difficult to grind through the rock and to try to get rid of this rock in order to then try to dig deeper. But in this video, we're actually going to be talking about this new startup that makes a very intriguing suggestion that can potentially help us reach even deeper depths with one single purpose – geothermal energy. By digging even deeper into our planet, we can actually uncover an extremely efficient way to generate pretty much free unlimited energy and also clean energy that, at least in theory, can help us solve a lot of modern problems. And so the ideas from this startup are currently extremely intriguing and involve some really interesting practical ideas that can actually help us unlock all of this in the next few years. But I guess let's start with the basics of how geothermal energy works and why it's actually one of the most unexplored sources of relatively free energy. Now, historically, one of the first places in America to ever use geothermal energy for commercial use was the Hot Lake Hotel located in Oregon that back in the days, back in 1907, was able to utilize some of the geothermal energy as a primary heat source for the residents staying in this hotel. Although in this case, it was not actually producing any electricity. But the first geothermal power generator that, back in 1904, was able to power five different light bulbs was the one you see right here, produced by Piero Ginori Conti, that was able to produce this in his hometown in Italy. And considering that this was over a hundred years ago from now, that's already quite impressive. But I guess what's not really that impressive is the fact that, well, not a lot of countries today use geothermal energy to produce any energy. And when you sort of think about it, it kind of makes a lot more sense than, for example, a hydro plant. So for example, here the energy is produced when the running water drives the turbine. Whereas here the same is done with the wind energy. But if you already have some kind of energy generated from the source, and it creates a lot of boiling water and all of this water generates steam, you can then use this steam to also drive turbines this way. And since a lot of places around the planet already have quite a lot of natural heat where steam is generated naturally, it sort of makes sense to possibly produce something here in order to generate this free energy. Although obviously it's not free entirely. In this case, the heat itself comes from within the planet and all of this is generated through the process of radioactive decay. The decay that happens inside the rock present inside our planet. And this is an extremely efficient process producing quite a lot of energy. As a matter of fact, it's believed it produces approximately 30 terawatts of energy, which is roughly around the double amount of energy the entire humanity uses right now. And so, at least in theory, geothermal energy coming from within the planet is more than enough to provide all of the energy we need. And the process of recovery of energy in this case is not really that complicated. It sort of functions in a similar way to how a typical nuclear power plant works. You have a bunch of water that becomes critical or supercritical and starts to create a lot of steam that then pushes the turbines producing the energy and then that steam is cooled down just to be recycled and turned into steam again. All of this today functions really well as we know from the nuclear power plants and all of this is extremely efficient like we know from countries like Iceland where it's responsible for approximately 30% of the entire energy or even countries like Philippines where it produces approximately 25%. And because this is technically clean energy and because it's basically free energy, why exactly do more countries not use this and more importantly, why have there actually not been that many advances in this particular technology in the last few decades? Well, the answer, as always, is a little bit complicated. First of all, the way this always works is first by drilling a very, very deep hole. The hole that's going to be at least a few kilometers deep and will reach some of the hotter regions of the crust. And generally, when it comes to the crust on our planet, for every single kilometer, the temperature increases by anywhere from 25 to 35 degrees Celsius or from 45 to 54 Fahrenheit. And so basically here, at the depth of about 6 kilometers, 
the temperature is already going to be above the boiling point of water. But at this depth, even though the water is going to become steam, it's still not going to be as efficient at producing the energy needed because it's not going to be driving the turbines as well as they would be driven by, for example, a hydro plant or a nuclear power plant. And so in order to produce more energy from this and in order to make the turbines more efficient, one thing you can do is try to build this near already hot regions such as, for example, near active volcanoes or in regions along the tectonic plates where there's a lot of heat already, and so by drilling a few kilometers down, you're going to find much higher temperatures. That's actually why Iceland is one of the perfect places for this, as are some of the regions in the Philippines with active volcanoes. Or the other alternative is to try to dig deeper, possibly as deep as 20 kilometers, where the temperatures are now approximately 500 degrees Celsius. And around 20 kilometers deep, at these really, really high temperatures, that's where you can actually start turning water into supercritical water that is now going to be able to produce just as much energy as a typical hydro plant, or even more. But 20 kilometers is really deep. And remember, the record so far is just over 12 kilometers. As a matter of fact, Kola Super Deep Borehole officially lost its title of the deepest hole to an oil field borehole back in 2008. But this one is just a little bit deeper, and even at these depths, it's already pushing its limits. And if 12 kilometers is already a limit, how do you get to 20 kilometers? And that's essentially where this new startup known as Quase tries to make things a little bit differently. Their entire proposal is based on the idea of digging really, really deep holes and reaching depths we've never been able to reach before, and doing so using an entirely new process they've been developing for the past few years. Instead of grinding the rock or instead of trying to somehow dig it out, they propose to actually burn the material or to melt the material using an extremely interesting device known as Gyrotron. The device that already exists and sort of looks like this, and that uses millimeter long electromagnetic waves to try to force the atoms and melt them together, producing something that you see right here in the process. And so by using very powerful electromagnetic radiation inside very powerful magnetic fields, the engineers behind this startup believe that this device can easily operate at even deeper depths and produce even larger holes up to a depth of about 20 or so kilometers, which they believe will only take them a few months to achieve. And by forming these large holes, they can then be used for the creation of supercritical water, which can then drive the turbines needed to generate the electricity. And considering that this particular startup has already raised quite a lot of money to create some kind of a proof of concept operation, if everything works out and if they're able to create this device, we might actually have our first prototype in just a few years by 2026 with the company expecting to buy and occupy one of the older power plants that's probably going to start producing its first electricity in 2028. And if they're successful, this would actually be a very important achievement. Right now, less than half a percent of all of our energy comes from geothermal energy. As a matter of fact, the United States today is still the leader when it comes to geothermal power. But considering the fact that it, this is free energy and it's actually extremely easy to generate, assuming we can build a deep enough hole, at least in theory, quite a lot of countries could completely switch to the use of geothermal energy from any other power source they're currently operating. So whatever comes out of this experiment is definitely going to be really exciting and potentially solve a lot of problems for the humanity as a whole. But before I finish this video, I actually wanted to end this on something that I've recently discovered here in South Korea when I was actually looking at one of the geothermal plants that I knew operated in one of the cities in the south. For some reason, it was actually shut down. And then I discovered that a few years ago, there was actually a really large earthquake in the area, with the article from Nature right here describing it in a little bit more detail, suggesting that the earthquake itself was maybe caused by a slightly newer technology when it comes to geothermal systems known as the EGS, Enhanced Geothermal System. Here are all of these systems currently in operation. And in this case, it's believed that the earthquake was probably caused uh, for the same reason that we usually get earthquakes from the technology known as fracking. Basically, by introducing large amounts of water in between the rock and by forcing the rock to start cracking, it might have unfortunately ended up creating some kind of an instability on the inside. Now, this is of course just assumed today, but this is a technology that's not really necessarily similar to what we just talked about previously. 
When it comes to geothermal energy by just drilling a single hole, we would not ever get any earthquakes. Because in this case, the water itself does not start circulating and breaking the rock on the inside. And so this is definitely slightly different from the EGS. But we'll probably come back and talk a little bit more about this because this is a pretty interesting topic and worth investigating. And so for now, I guess it's just worth seeing what happens with this technology and if the startup behind this can actually drill a hole deep enough in order to turn geothermal energy into a completely new and relatively cheap source of energy for humanity. But until we learn more, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the links in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining your channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.